what's up guys it's tip in life some things just go hand in hand of course the interview fries and inter ketchup, Ian? Milk i think i've cookies, watched all the interviews mmorpgs and rating and when it comes to rating vanilla yep. world of warcraft had no shortage of it yep. with over 50 bosses across seven diverse instances that's a vanilla lot of bosses WoW still boasts the most end game content in world of warcraft history but it wasn't just boss quantity that made vanilla rating so great it was solid it design was philosophies such as challenging content social camaraderie and exclusive rewards are ultimately what forged the legacy of vanilla rating yes. that we all know today yes. out of all the incredible qualities that define vanilla's rating scene its challenge seems to be the quality that is world the first most. that was the world the first drag kill right there of vanilla encounters might seem dull to players accustomed to the neck breaking pace of modern content of vanilla course. rating was still difficult albeit for different reasons Back in 2005, the rating system extended far beyond the artificial borders of an instance. A significant portion of raid-related challenges occurred out in the world in preparation of the actual. I love how it looks like it's being recorded on like a VHS even set or something. Foot inside Vanilla's iconic 40 mans, a series of time-intensive requirements had to be met. Okay. The first and most obvious requirement was reaching level cap, a nearly 300 hour journey that tested the patience of even the most committed players. When a player finally reached well, level 60, pre-raid gearing took over as the primary grind. And of with course. some end game dungeons taking four hours or more to clear, you can imagine just how long the gearing up process actually was. Oh, and this was back before the LFG tool existed, so for most medium and low population servers, You'd have to just gearing up talk was and trade doubly chat. painful. It when was high great. level dungeon gear was finally procured, including mandatory fire resist pieces, players... Bro, like, just seeing that Night Elf with that, that axe there gets me so fucking nostalgic. My friend Zach, he had a Night Elf female, and yeah, I roasted him for this. He had a Night Elf female with that exact same weapon. I think that's Legacy from Karazhan. And then the shoulders, like, dude, that is TBC. I remember that character right there ninja looted a guild bank and made the guild fall apart. Like, th those moments. His, his name was Bodum Child. I remember this so fucking clearly. Like, it's honestly beautiful for me to think about it. Like, holy fuck, man. I'm getting so nostalgic by just, like... Dude, okay, all right, let me just... ...were then directed back to the world, where they would be required to complete prerequisite quest chains prior to entering raids. Right. Commonly referred to as attunements, these quest chains could take several hours or days depending on group availability. How much you suck, if players dick. were lucky enough to rush through these attunements, the most difficult challenge of all awaited them. Finding 39 other committed players on their server. I like how he doesn't say the actual the raid. Just list finding the people. Who could consistently attend the guild's agreed upon raid times. Right. I'd like to note that this was all before cross realm technology, meaning that the only pool of players available to a recruiting guild were the players on their server. And seeing as server populations were capped between 2,500 to 3,500 concurrent players, okay. I think you can imagine just how hard it could be to find people who met all of the minimum raid requirements and who were members of your own faction. If you thought finding nine other people for your weekly heroic pug was hard, I've got news for you. Look, time out all the people that are doing it. It's just, it, it's it's annoying this time. Like, we've gotten, it, it, this, is, this is like the third time, okay, guys? Just time them out this time. The craziest part is, these were all just the requirements to enter a raid. Once players were lucky enough to lock down a consistent 40-man roster, okay. infamous bosses such as Ragnaros and Cthun still awaited. In hindsight, Molten Core, Anixia, and even Blackwing Lair weren't exactly the pinnacle of complex raid design. But that doesn't mean the bosses were easy mode. Due to the punishing nature of Vanilla's yes, mechanics, did. wipes were still possible, and in some cases, inevitable. And when you take into that's account true. that vanilla raiders lack the mobility and AoE potential we have in modern WoW today, that's you a can huge start to point. see why the early raids weren't simple cake. Yeah, walks. people just didn't really I've have AoE abilities. I've already made a video comparing modern raiding to vanilla, so I don't want to talk about that too much. The point is, when you take into account all of the effort that went into raiding in the first place, you can see why many vanilla veterans consider the raid system to be such a brutal challenge. But it's that same challenge that made the experience so great. Overcoming okay. obstacles after months and months of hard work is just so darn satisfying. Yep. Even when the loot drops don't go your way, oftentimes teaming up with a group of like-minded individuals to Loud accomplish screams something in five seconds. is Get ready. enough. Get 
working together has always been a staple of the MMORPG genre. That was Early beautiful. Early text-based MUDs permitted cooperative play as a means of social interaction between players. But Vanilla WoW's raid philosophies didn't just permit social interaction, they nurtured it. By designing nearly all endgame content around group play, Vanilla taught level-capped players one very important lesson. It's a team effort. These four simple words echo deeply throughout all of Vanilla's game systems, yeah. and perhaps never more so than in Fuck yeah. We already mentioned how groups of- See, that's like, that's one of the big fucking things that Vanilla WoW had, is that you are part of the team. It wasn't as indiv- like, raiding now is so focused on the individual, right? Like, you can join any group in any guild on any server and get your own loot that's specifically tailored to you. But in Classic, you got loot for the entire group and it was a team accomplishment and it was teamwork and i feel like that was one of the best things about it and it wasn't even it didn't even have to do with the game it had to do with like the community and that's why it was so good players had to work hard together to complete attunements but vanilla's social dependency extended far beyond that and it's the same Due with to bc the lack too of a streamlined group finder tool prospective raiders were forced to communicate with each other directly prior to raid formation communication yep. was typically transmitted through various chat channels embedded within the game by utilizing this unrefined system, players could freely introduce themselves to one another, engage in comedic banter, or segue into the more intimate communication methods such as whispers. <laughs> While this might all seem trivial to yep. you, I believe these hands-off, interface-free communication systems shit, play man. a huge role in establishing server community, forging... You know how you can tell this is actual vanilla? Both of these paladins are basically just standing here AFK. Like, nobody, like, only half of the people in this group are actually casting spells. W w watch, watch what they're doing here. Familiarity between players and reminding us all that we're experiencing this adventure with other people. Oh, oh, so Mr. Rogue Boy had to backpedal out of the way and the paladins came back from AFK and uh, they cast one heal. Not with random names listed in queues. But more importantly, in the context of raiding, the lack of an LFG tool meant players had to rely yeah. on their own social output it was to great. remain active. This meant constant communication, networking, and reputation building between raiders, ultimately resulting in a tighter social experience. Fuck yeah. Social dependency in raiding Fuck is a yeah. large part of what made those 40 mans so memorable, and a huge reason why vanilla raiding is so sorely missed. By That's actively absolutely socializing right. and convening with their fellow server mates, Been players waiting augmented on this for a their while. raid experience in game, as well as nourish the social needs all of us humans have. And when a group of 40 players found themselves meshing well together and clearing content, Vanilla presented them with the biggest cherry on top an MMO can offer. Epic rewards. World of Warcraft rating was never more rewarding than it was during Vanilla. The first reward was the content yep. itself, and the ability to experience it. This may not seem like much to those groomed in the LFR era, but back in Vanilla, TBC, and even Wrath, players could have no idea how bosses worked or even looked like until they actually saw them in Raid. Seeing epic monsters like Ragnaros emerge for the first time was absolutely mind-blowing and felt better that than That was like a cinematic in itself. Could. Well, maybe not yeah like the modern raids of today vanilla wow raids dropped epic quality loot Fuck the yeah. difference between them and, and now, legendaries however, was how impactful the gear actually was beyond serving as a flat dps increase vanilla raiding gear was also incredibly useful in pvp this was largely due to the fact that pvp stat templates did not exist in 2005 and pvp specific stats like resilience were not introduced until the burning crusade that meant pvp this gear was meant actually good in pve epic drops in vanilla raids I like could that. be easily used in pvp scenarios Fuck yeah. and were sometimes preferable to the actual pvp rank gear Beyond i don't know if people would use aspringer though raid drops could also serve as cosmetic rewards Seeing as Vanilla Gear's art detail increased linearly with level, raiding gear was almost objectively the coolest looking gear in the entire game. Level 60 raiders could strut through Ironforge with pride, knowing that their appearance made them stand out. This See, is that was better than transmog. I'm personally against the post cata transmog system. There it is. Diminishing the cosmetic value of current tier raid gear by allowing access to previous tier appearances removes one of the key incentives to raid, player ability to visually distinguish themselves from one another based on their merits. And speaking of players distinguishing themselves from others, vanilla raiding rewarded players with a priceless intangible that has long since vanished from World of Warcraft. Prestige. Prestige. Because of how difficult and time-consuming it was to even start raiding, a relatively small portion of players what could the actually fuck? do it. 
This meant that a server yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. base became a king yeah. to an exclusive fraternity. Exactly. With more dedicated that's what I was going to say. More respect for their efforts. Non-rating players looked upon those who did in amazement, fantasizing about the day they would wield such spectacular glory. Okay. I know some people might dismiss this all as special snowflakey, but I counter no, with this. No, 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 not true at all, okay? And actually, it is true. Who here doesn't, like, who here wants to be a special snowflake? Who here wants to walk into the room and everyone's like, damn, wow, you've got some cool ass Everybody wants to be a special snowflake. That's what it's about. Like, but the blizzard, the problem is blizzard said, yeah, well, okay, well, then everybody is. That was the problem. Yes. Recognition for hard work is a cornerstone of human psychology. Yes. And according to various yes. studies conducted in the workplace, is more important to people than salaries. For years now, prestige and WoW has slowly slipped away, as Blizzard has taken away methods for players to set themselves apart from one another. Yep. Thankfully, in vanilla, meritocracy still reigns. As vanilla it should. Rating offered players more than any other game could. It offered a challenge that the committed could sink their teeth into. As it, it offered a social should. experience only available in a true MMORPG. And it offered incredible rewards to those who were able to persevere through each obstacle in ways that no other version of Warcraft did. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why vanilla rating was so great. Thank you for watching the video, guys. If you liked what you saw, sub it up there and stick around because we got more coming. A special thank you to all my friends on Patreon. You guys make these videos possible. If you're interested in joining this our is like back WoW in the day too. This is over Discord a year ago. And the link below. And for more classic WoW content, news, and updates, you can follow me on Twitter as well. Have a wonderful day, fellas. And as always, tips out, baby. So you look at this, dude. It came out on May 13th, 2018. So it was literally a year and two days ago that this shit came out. Like, I, I don't know why. I think this is badass, man. Like, it's crazy to feel like how far we've come from this point. You know what I mean? What happened to the beta? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, we're sitting here. I am refreshing it over and over and over. And I am anxiously awaiting the beta to come out. Okay? It's going to be out when it's out. See the new cinematic? Yes, I have.